Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Green Bay. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to all of you and those of you joining us online today. I'd also like to extend a very special thanks to Shirley Shuffleman, who will be playing piano for us today. And the amazing Jane Bees, who is going to be our reader today as well. Thank you, thank you both so much. As you can probably tell, I am not Pastor Katie. Uh, Pastor Katie is on vacation uh, this weekend, and she will be returning to the church office on Wednesday. Uh, for those of you online in the sanctuary, uh, my name is Joel Marine. I'm our director of Christian education, and I've been blessed to lead us in worship today. Uh, today we are receiving a special offering for the Emergency Assistance Fund. This supports our ability to help members and neighbors in need with gas cards, rent, utility bills, and assistance, and such like that. Uh, if you feel so led, please contribute as you are able today. Uh, mark your check as emergency assistance uh, on the envelope. We are starting a new Bible study this week. Uh, please come join us. The info is in your bulletin. The books are available in the workroom as well. There is a small envelope next to the books if you care to donate for your book for the study. All women are invited to go to dinner this Thursday night at Cheese Steak Rebellion. There's the bulletin board just downstairs and to your right to sign up. I do believe that is for church chicks, if I am correct. Yes, yes excellent. And then there's an insert in your bulletin today about a special event next Sunday called Composing a Legacy. Uh, we are excited to welcome Reverend Kyle Nolan to preach to us and lead us in a workshop after worship. The luncheon is free and open to all. Uh, please sign up so that we can plan accordingly. Uh, finally, the letter carrier's food drive is scheduled for Saturday, May 13th, and we need your help. Uh, more information is in the announcements in your bulletin. Please talk to Jill or Jean Stenson to volunteer. And if nothing else, friends, let us prepare our minds and our hearts for the worship of God this day. Please rise if you are able for the call to worship. Our shepherd invites us to this time of worship. Our God leads us 
by refreshing waters. As we share our lives with one another, our souls are restored. God leads us in paths of righteousness and adds to our company day by day. We will partake of physical and spiritual food with glad and generous hearts. Remember the one in whose name we worship, Jesus Christ, who died amidst the world's suffering. Christ came that all might have an abundant life. We acknowledge and rejoice in this gift. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Lead us now, O God, through the maze of our existence, as you led your people long ago. Keep us from resisting your word of judgment or shrieking from the challenges of discipleship. Call us by name and show us the pathways you would have us travel. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. The scriptures compare us to sheep who have gone astray. As sheep seem not to see beyond the next tuft of grass, we seem to be attracted to the immediate temptation. We become ravenous consumers rather than good stewards of God's abundance. Christ calls us to respond to the shepherd's voice. Let us pray. Please join me in the prayer of confession. O oh God, we do not want to admit that our possessions possess us, yet we do seem captive to all the things we have acquired and all the things we want. We are reluctant to share too much, lest we be deprived of comforts we cherish. We do not want to suffer for our faith. There are limits to our willingness to follow Jesus. O oh God, help us trust you 
beyond these limits. Please offer your own silent prayer of confession. My friends, receive these words of assurance. God provides for us as a good shepherd provides for a flock of sheep, seeking green pastures and still waters for us even in periods of famine and drought. In fearful times amid loss, the shepherd's care is always available. Surely God's goodness and mercy will restore all who give up their own pretensions in order to live in community with glad and generous hearts. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. All right, everyone. I'd like to invite the children and those young at heart for the children's time this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Connie. Good morning. Oh, what book are you reading? Nice. Nicely done. Good morning. It is so good to see you this morning, even though it is burst of wrinkled. Oh, here they go. Here come the Come on up. You're okay. Come on up. Come on up. Good morning. Good morning, Cameron. Good morning, Jackson. You can sit wherever you want. Good morning, Jackson. Good morning. Cameron, you want to come sit here? Sounds good. Well, good morning. It is so good to see all of you this morning. So in our lesson today, Jesus is talking to a group of people. And Jesus talks about himself being like a shepherd to sheep. You guys know what a sheep is? Huh? Oh, bah, bah, and friendly. Well, and Jesus talks about himself being the gate. So what would happen is there would be these sheep. They would be in the field. They'd be lost, and they'd be wandering around. And Jesus would say, well, you need a good shepherd to lead them and guide them so that they can get to the gate. So 
What I would like to do this morning is play a little game of Simon Says. Mm. Have you guys ever played Simon Says before? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you have, but we're going to try it, okay? Mm -hmm. So what happens is whenever I say Simon Says and then an action, we're going to do it together, okay? So Simon Says, lift up your hands. Oh, yep, good job. Simon Says, put your hands on your knees. Good job. Simon says, give a thumbs up. Excellent. All right. So now we're going to try it. But if I don't say the word Simon says in front, I don't want you to do the action. Okay? It's a little tricky. So Simon says, touch your nose. Good job. Simon says, touch your head. Put your hands down. Ooh. Simon says, put your hands down. Simon says, touch your toes. Sit up. Oh, see, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough to listen sometimes. And what Jesus tells us in our lesson today is that he is going to lead us to the gate, and the gate will open, and that we will feast on green pastures and we will be happy, and we will be with God forever. So, my advice to everyone today is when we're out in the world this week, I want us to use our good listening ears. Be sure we use them with our mom and with our dad or with our siblings, and be sure we listen to them, because they're going to lead us in the right direction, and they're going to make sure that we're safe. Would you all please pray with me this morning? Dear Jesus, Thank you for leading us, Thank you for leading us. Guiding, us. guiding us, and keeping us safe. And keeping us safe. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for coming up and joining us. Awesome the rest of your Sunday. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. God, beyond our knowing, yet revealed so personally in Jesus Christ, help us to embrace the abundant life you have offered us. May we follow the example of Jesus, risking abuse and suffering for the sake of your children trusting in your abiding care for each one of us until all join in praising you with mutual goodwill and joy. Amen. Our New Testament reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. Listen to what the Spirit has to say. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Shirley. That was absolutely beautiful. I just found myself smiling and just, fresh. thank you, thank you so much. Friends, our gospel for the day comes from John chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Hear what the Spirit is telling us today. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger because they will run from him, because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus uses this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. So once there was this lady who had a cat, and her cat had passed away. Uh, Her cat, having gone to heaven, was met by God as he sauntered in. And the cat said, I have been around the barn all my life. I have had to sleep on the hard ground all my life. Do you think I could ask for a soft pillow to sleep on? God said, well, why not? And gave him a pillow. The cat climbed up and curled on that pillow and went to sleep. And he thought he was in heaven. A couple of days passed and a group of mice also came up to heaven and God asked them if he could make their stay more pleasant. One mouse said, well, we are few in number and because we are so slow, Could you give us something to make us faster? Well, God gave them each a pair of roller skates. And he was overjoyed, and they all skated off, going all over heaven. Now, a few days later, God happened to come across this cat again and asked him how he was doing and how his stay was going. The cat responded, I am doing great. The pillow you gave me is wonderful, but I have to confess you've truly outdone yourself by providing me these meals on wheels that keep skating by. In our passage today, uh, John begins with a scene of sheep in the field and a shepherd drawing them in. The shepherd drawing the sheep to the gate opens it for them and they enter their home. The sheep heed the shepherd's voice and follow it as it is a familiar one that they trust. Now I'm sure many of us can hear a distinctive voice in our head that when we hear it, it is a voice that we trust, that we understand and can follow. There are two that come distinctly in mind my wife's, and then my wonderful mother's, who, when I would be in trouble, would say, Jolie, Maureen, and I would know immediately I was in trouble. But nonetheless, it was a voice that they trust and that they understood. Now, Jesus went on to state that I am the gate. I kind of emphasized that as I was reading our gospel today, because I've always been told that Jesus is the shepherd, Right? Jesus is the good shepherd that is going to lead his flock in the right way to enter heaven. But here Jesus says, I am the gate. Now Jesus goes on to explain, whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and find pasture. So the only way to enter heaven is through Jesus. And now this isn't the only time that Jesus states this. Uh, later on in chapter 14, Jesus states, I am the way and the truth and the life No one comes to the Father, but through me. So if Jesus is the gate, who is the shepherd? Who is the one leading us and guiding us along this way into heaven? A few weeks ago, uh, Lonnie McCormick and I had the opportunity to take our youth group to, oh, I'm going to forget the name, darn it, sorry, New Community Shelter that is just up on Mather Street. Uh, This was the shelter that we donated the Socks of Love that we created on our Advent workshop. Our Socks of Love had a fully thick pair of wool socks, also came with shampoo, conditioner, 
uh, shaving cream, a razor, toothpaste, toothbrush, mouthwash, and I believe Kleenex as well. All donated from us, we the congregation. Now that we were blessed enough to have a tour of this facility as well. New community is built upon three floors. The top floor is all residential housing. So they have roughly, I can't remember how many rooms off the top of my head, so please forgive me, but they will house at least 60 people on the top floor in bunk rooms of about eight people per room. There are about three or four bathrooms spread along the hallway, but it is eight people to a room. Now, when you have been there long enough, you have the option to then move to the second floor. And on the second floor, they house 20 residents in single occupancy apartments. The residents there then also pay rent on these small apartments. They are flourished with a couch, a bed, a stove, a refrigerator, and a window, which is fantastic to be able to see out of as well. Now, these are not very large. I would roughly estimate that they are about 12 feet wide, maybe by 20 feet long but a single occupancy apartment nonetheless. Now, when they are in this apartment, they are paying rent for this. So every month that they are paying rent, it is being documented that they have an on-time payment for a apartment room for an extended period of time. So that way, when they go from this place to then apply for apartment building outside of it, they have a history of on-time payments that they were on time every single day. As well, on the main floor, they have a computer lab, they have meeting rooms, a very large lunch room as well, and then other breakout rooms for sessions. They will have volunteers come in either from the AODA, the Wisconsin Department of Workforce Development, they'll have budgeting counselors, GED counselors, personal development courses that are offered to all of these residents as well. It is incredible to take this group of youth and walk through. When we were doing it and we were going through each of the floors, some of the youth were caught a bit off guard. Their facial expressions were blank. And as Lonnie and I asked them, like, well, what do you think? How was this experience and such? The first thing that we were met with was silence. Now, yes, maybe a part of it was they didn't know how to react, but I think also a part of it as well was a bit of shock that this is happening right here in Green Bay. In the 2022 Annual Homelessness Assessment Report, say that four times fast, to Congress was reported that 4,775 people were experiencing homelessness in Wisconsin as of January of that year. This number has significantly dropped compared to the 5,465 individuals as of 2009. Now, Wisconsin ranked highest in the nation for sheltering veterans at 98%, meaning that there are only 2% of homeless veterans in this state that are not receiving services through a shelter or through a halfway home. And Wisconsin also ranked third highest in the nation at sheltering unaccompanied youth at 96%, so 4% of unaccompanied youth experiencing homelessness don't have a place to stay here in Wisconsin. Now, to some, those numbers may be off-putting. Some may ask, well, what can we do about that 2%? What can we do about that 4%? And absolutely, I'm right there with you. And there is something to celebrate, though, of that we have gotten 98% of the homeless veterans within this state, either in a shelter or in a homeless to self-sustainability house of which they can survive from there. In John's lesson today, he says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. But I, I have come that they may experience life and have it abundantly. Now this thief, whether it may be addiction, mental illness, circumstance, or just plain bad luck came and took something from these people that they would be in this situation. Jesus then says to us to lead them, to guide them. 
and that if we do so, that they will have life and they will have it abundantly. Abundantly. Exceedingly, very high, beyond measure, more superfluous, a quantity so abundant as to be considered more than what one would expect to anticipate. And now with this, Jesus isn't just talking about worldly wealth, such as a place to live or car or food or money. Jesus is also, of course, talking about heavenly wealth and everlasting life. We had the opportunity to bring these people supplies and support them in that time of need. But we can't do it alone. Surely not one person can shepherd everyone around the world. It would burn them out. They would become exhausted. Their resources would run out. It's not possible to do so. So it comes the question of if we are called to be shepherds to these people or to other people and to lead them to Jesus Christ, surely we must need shepherds in our lives as well. Well, graciously, I happen to have one of those shepherds of mine in this room today. While I was growing up in the small town of Winnicani, God placed a young man named Brandon Hyder in my life. Now, we met at fifth grade, so we were young, a bit unheralding, and a bit rambunctious, for sorts to say the less. And if I remember correctly, in our fifth grade student, Brandon said that before I get married, I am going to have a 1969 Dodge Charger after the Dukes of Hazard. Well, so have it. A week before his wedding, fully finished and ready to go, Brandon did have a 1970 Dodge Charger, absolutely beautiful and ready to go. Now, through the time of us growing up, Brandon was more of a mentor to me than I have ever admitted. In football, he played linebacker and I was his defensive end, meaning that I had his back and he quite literally had mine. As not a morning person, during the summertime, we had the option of getting up at 5.30 and being to the gym by 6 a.m. to have morning lifting sessions. One of us was there at 6 a.m., and one of us chose the noon time to go and lift, because I could sleep in, right? Makes good sense. So happens that someone didn't agree with me sleeping in and would roll up with his big Dodge truck at whichever hour in the morning, park on the lawn, and wait until I slumbered out of bed to come out and see what the ruckus was. Go out and you see this huge Dodge Ram Dooley, and you're like, oh gosh. All right, let's go. So put on clothes, and, and we go. In 2009, or sorry, I should say 2010, uh, a tragedy struck. Brandon was up north snowmobiling with a group of friends, he hit a patch of black ice and was thrown from his snowmobile. He set a record for broken ribs at Aspirus Hospital in Wausau, breaking all of his ribs on the left side of his body and half on the right. He suffered a punctured lung, a concussion, a broken thumb, and truly the doctors said that in that moment his body or at least his muscles upon his body encased his body and was one of the reasons why he survived. Now, to come back from something like that is nothing short of a miracle in my own mind, but he is nothing short of hard-headed and refuses to fail. Brandon recovered from his injury, sustained all of his homework, got it in on time, and yes, he was able to graduate with all of us that year as well. Brandon was set to go and play football in college that fall. Oh my gosh, I am forgetting the university. Please forgive me. Where did you go before you were at um, WLC? Carroll, sorry, thank you. Uh, Carroll College. And of course, he did have to take that year off because of his injuries. Now, this makes good sense, right? You have to let the body heal before we'll follow. But... Through perseverance and strength, he did still fight through, played football at both Carroll College and Wisconsin Lutheran College as well. Now, life had brought him down to quite literally his knees or this just the hospital bed, but he was able to still strive through and make it. He has reminded me of having faith when times are tough. Quoting one of his favorite songs, You make plans and God laughs. Well, I'm hopeful that God did not plan, or at least we did not plan for him sustaining this injury and then him recovering from it. 
He has taught me to treat everyone with kindness and respect. He has taught me to talk to the secretary the same way that you talk to the president of the company, the same way that you talk to the janitor, to the same way that you talk to the customer. And those lines have struck with me and stayed with me as I have grown, and it's really made that everlasting impact on, in a world where you can be anything, be kind. It's a sign that actually hangs in our house. In a world where you can be anything, be kind. The world is our playground, I was told as I was growing up. And if you want it, you can be anything. You can grow up and you can be anything. Now, as I grew and met different difficulties, as you can imagine, growing from a single-parent household, I found different challenges. And I thought, well, there's no way that I can be this, or I can't be that, or I can't go down this road, or... You know, I must fall into this, that, or the other thing. And then those words came back to me. Be kind. Now, sometimes being kind can be challenging, especially when we're feeling stressed or down or when the people that we're trying to be kind to are not kind back. But ironically, it's in these moments that it's most important to be kind to ourselves and to others. In 2019, two sisters, 12-year-old Reagan and 9-year-old Rylan, began selling signs with those words, be kind. Now, this was right before the pandemic hit, and their goal in that moment was to raise money for the local charities and organizations in their hometown. See, Reagan and Rylan have three siblings with what they call distinct abilities or special needs. And they had found in their hometown that sometimes it was difficult for other people to be kind to those who are different around them. So they started making these signs and they started holding them up, or sorry, posting them up in their yard and they started placing them around their community. And before they knew it, it took off and flourished. And as of last year, they have either made or sold over 13,000 signs with those simple words, be kind. So why, why do I tell you this when we talk about Jesus being the gate and the shepherd leading our sheep to the gate so that Jesus may enter or help us enter heaven? In today's life, it is difficult to be kind to everyone. So many times we find ourselves causing to find differences between the two of us, as in, well, you do this for a living, I do this for a living, you are Packer fans, I'm a Viking fan, but hey, still... I promise you, we can all still get along, and we can all be kind. I may never have to agree that the Packers are the better team, but I can still be kind and say it anyways. Jesus reminds reminds us of that in his ministry. As Jesus was walking through his life, it did not matter who came up to him, what their background was, whether it was the woman by the well, the people with leprosy at the gates, or if it was the Pharisees and Sadducees that he met in the temple, Jesus was kind. Now, I would like to leave you with this. There was a Christian artist, or sorry, is a Christian artist of music, and his name is Flame, and he has a song called Start Over, and it goes like this. Everybody has a blank page, a story you're writing today, a wall that you're climbing, Now you can carry the past on your shoulders, or you can start over. Regrets, no matter what you're going through, Jesus, he gave it all to save you. He carried the cross on his shoulders so that we could start over. Brandon reminded me that no matter what my upbringing was, or no matter where someone came through life, is that we choose our path. And if I may be going down a dark road, I can always start over. I guarantee you when I was in high school sleeping throughout the summer and not wanting to get up to go lifting or to go do other activities, I never saw myself here at 31, a father with two children. I never saw myself having a relationship with someone else because I just had the one in my own life of my mom. I had never experience truly what a father figure was like in my life. But God sends us shepherds to guide us and lead us. And then it is our goal to then take that and give it to others. Amen.
You may be seated. Friends, I'd now like to invite Steve Warner up for our Minute for Mission today. Steve is going to be telling us about Joshua. Thank you. Should I speak from here? Great. Well, good morning, and um, thank you for having me here today. Um, my wife and I have been visiting here for the last few months on, on and off, and um, I visited a few months ago, and um, Fritzy found me and um, knew that I was involved with Joshua, which is an a interfaith social justice organization, and she recruited me to speak to you. Um, I've also been in contact with Alan Smith, your outreach um, coordinator, and on Monday, I had the opportunity to have lunch with Pastor Katie, who gave me the blessing to be here today. So, um, so I, I am a, um, the co-president for the group called Joshua. How many of you have heard of Joshua before? Oh, that's wonderful. So uh, Joshua has been around for um, 19 years. We started in 2004. And one of my favorite scripture passages which speaks to me about Joshua is from Micah chapter 6, verse 8. What does the Lord require of you? to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And for me, um, I've been involved in a lot of outreach activities over the years. I'm very familiar with your Presbyterian pantry. Um, love to hear about your, um, your sock, uh, your youth going over to uh, NEW um, shelter and touring. Um, but Joshua is different than, Joshua's efforts are different than downstream. Um, Joshua tends to work upstream to try to um, deal with issues before they become issues. So we're more of an advocacy group, um, and, and um, this, share, this tells a little bit about um, Joshua here. And I, I, I told um, the AV people that it was small, and it's small on my end there, so... <laughs> I don't know if, how well you can read that, but um, um, so go on to the next slide, if you would, please, which tells a little bit about um, Joshua being part of a larger organization called Wisdom. So we are one of 12 organizations in the state of Wisconsin with a larger group called Wisdom, and Wisdom from Wisconsin is, lar is part of a larger national group called Gamaliel. Wisdom is one of the larger um, state organizations. So Joshua, so there's another group in the Fox Valley. There's groups in Wausau. There's a group in um, Eau Claire, Madison, Milwaukee, um, and throughout the state. But Joshua is our area. Um, and next slide, please. So I just wanted to um, share with you a little bit about our mission, values, and and uh, vision. So Joshua inspires and equips people to work together on systemic justice issues in Northeast Wisconsin. We build relationships in the public and private sectors to advance issues that align with our core values. And our vision is that we envision a fair and equitable future where everyone in Northeast Wisconsin is an active participant in building a strong and healthy community. Joshua's core values are essential to our vision. Although we're composed of diverse, faith-based organizations, we welcome people of all backgrounds. We believe in the inherent worth and dignity of every human being. We believe in equity, education, advocacy, racial and social justice, and community and relationship building. That's a lot, right? <laughs> it really is a lot, but that's, that's what our, that's what, that's what we see ourselves doing. Um, all right, next slide, please. So one of the things I'm very proud of um, in my work on the board is we've adopted a land and labor acknowledgement statement that essentially um, um, honors the indigenous tribes of, of, of who have gone before us and honors the sacrifices of black individuals who we've benefited from their labor. Um, next slide. And, 
And this is where the rubber meets the road a little bit with Joshua. So we've got a board, and we've, we're made up of a variety of, of faith communities in the Green Bay area. We have um, three task forces that are doing work, and, and um, our most active task force is our transformational justice group. Um, that We used to be called criminal justice task force, but we've, we've realized that not everybody in the criminal justice um, system are criminals, and so our, our, we've changed our name to transformational justice. So we've done, um, we've got a, a, a solitary confinement replica cell coming um, in two weeks. It's going to be at um, uh, Resurrection Catholic Church in Alloway on, on, uh, in two weeks, um, May 13th. Um, and we, we work closely with um, the Green Bay Police Department when there's been a shooting um, a, an act of gun violence that's resulted in a death. We have a pr we've had a prayer vigil in the neighborhood to pray for the um, the victim and pray for the community in the neighborhood. Um, and and then we have an environmental justice group um, task force that's done a number of things. As you can see, we're, we've got an Earth Day cleanup planned for next week. Um, Earth Day in Wisconsin, in Wisconsin up here should be two weeks later because it's a lot easier to be out when it's a little bit nicer. So and we're doing that next Saturday. And, um, and then we have a task force um, on immigration. And you can see some of the efforts there. Now that's a newer group. We've just been involved with that group for the last year. So um, um, next slide, please. Our, our group is kind of um, centered around our Religious Leaders Caucus, and I've invited Pastor Katie to come to that group, um, and hopefully, and she's planning to attend. They meet monthly, and so our religious leaders um, deal with the, the, the spiritual issues and give us guidance about what uh, causes and what actions we should be looking at. Um, and so they're, they're critical in our, in our group. Um, on Thursday, I joined um, about 500 people from around the state at the Capitol. I was up very early in the morning, about 5 a.m., and I'm not a per morning person either, Joel. <laughs> um, so I was up early, took a bus down to Madison, and met with um, representatives there to talk about um, wisdoms and Joshua's priorities for this next biennium budget. Um, all right, next slide, please. Why does Joshua need you? Um, so this is my pitch. Um, as co-president, I am hoping that First Presbyterian Church of Green Bay will be interested in becoming one of our member churches. Um, and so I'm, I'm hoping to have continued dialogue with your leaders to talk a little bit more about that, what that means and how you can be involved. It's not working at, you know, it's not working at um, St. John's Homeless Shelter or it's not doing food drives, but it's more advocacy work. All right, next, next slide. Why do I need Joshua? Um, and I can't read that from here. <laughs> but, um, but Joshua is the group that, um, you know, that is dealing with social justice issues in this, in this area. And there are, you guys all have different areas probably that are passion, passionate, uh, that you are passionate about. And so Joshua is, um, is a link to be involved in helping to solve and work upstream on some of those issues. All right, next slide and how we make a difference, and that is too small probably for you to read as well. And then go on to the next one. Yeah, and th this is just some of the pictures of activities that we've been involved in in the last couple of years. So, um, yeah, I, um, I know that we sang a song, our opening song today, opening hymn, They'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. And for me, Joshua is a way for me to express my Christian love to others most in need. So I'll be available after the service. And um, 
can answer other questions if, if people have those. And um, I know Fritzy will be making sure to bring people over to talk with me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you so much for sharing with us this morning. Do not fear, I have found the prayers of the people. I almost panicked there, I thought they were lost. But no, we, we do have them. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, I pray for the leaders of this country. You will guide us and guide them in the ways of freedom, truth, justice, and peace. God, we pray for those in our community. May they know your love. May they have courage and compassion to find you. God, I pray for our enemies, and I pray for those who wish to harm us, that you may turn their hearts of stone into kindness and love, that you may show us that we are all people of yours and that we are all sheep listening to your voice to be led to the everlasting life. God, I ask you to please watch over our members that are experiencing pain and suffering. God, please be a guidance with them. Hold them close. Be with them as they find you. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish. We hold for those who have passed recently. God, we ask that you will be with the families as they come closer together, that you may be with them and that you may guide them in those next steps. God, I also ask you to please be with all of us as we take these next steps. God, as we search to find you, as we search to be the best shepherd that we can be to lead people and guide people to you, God, please give us the words to say, give us the life that you want us to live to be the best example of you as we may honor your past and your future, Lord. I want to lift up those here in this church. God, please be with Leah Mott. God, please be with those who are suffering from injury and those who are recovering. God, please be with those who seem lost and have, cannot find their way. Be that beaming light to bring them back here to you that they may flourish and grow in you. God, we lift up all the needs of our lives and our hearts as we offer you the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, as we have been so blessed in our lives to have gone with us to carry out our message to those, may we continue to pay that gift forward today. I invite the offertory to come forward.
Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Thank you, God, for the abundant life we enjoy, not in the things we possess, but in the relationships you offer and the opportunities for sharing that you provide. May all that we dedicate to you be distributed in ways that meet human need and offer praise to you. Extend our outreach beyond our vision that we may live in awe and wonder before you, marveling before your goodness and mercy. Amen. My friends, receive the charge and blessing. You have been claimed by God, our Good Shepherd. Know God not as stranger, but as friend. God is our shepherd, we shall not want. God leads us daily and restores our souls. Easter continues, for Christ lives in us. Jesus came that we might have abundant life. Daily we receive God's goodness and mercy, our cup overflow with God's generosity. Let us devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching. Let us pray and break bread together. We find our lives in giving them to others. In Christ we discover the joy of service. Amen.